Thank you for joining me on this tutorial, an introduction to my watercolor or aquarelle practice. We are here in my apartment, close to Gare du Midi in Brussels. In addition to the videos I made in Ostend, I thought it would be nice to invite you for a more personal visit to my studio as well. While I will be walking us through different aspects of my material and compositional choices, I will also be discussing more philosophical and personal aspects of my painting practice in general. My concerns in working from a model are wide ranging. To discuss first intimacy seems most relevant, the collapsing of time and space with another person onto the picture plane, a way of discussing proximity and relativity to others through painting. In this process, the artist is confronted with questioning intimacy with self as well as intimacy with the model, and again with intimacy with the public, those who view this process in the final artwork. It is a very layered development from starting in the studio to exhibiting the work publicly. Here I sit with Diego, a young Brazilian Belgian guy I met by chance in Brussels. The viewer is unable to precisely define our relation, although there is a level of chaleur or warmth between us. The paintings I make in this video of Diego are rather free form, still structurally intact, but a bit loose. While building up the portraits, you feel a sense of chanceful encounters radiating from the meeting of his different features between his lips, eyes, ears, and the rest. I often start portraits with a center point, such as the nose and work outwards. This way, each feature is constructed based on the composition and placement of the last form. It helps keep the elements intact in relation to one another. Diego is patient. The space feels peaceful with the two of us together, en face with one another. We speak briefly and directly with some moments, very quiet in between. While many of the facial features are formed instinctively and by direct observation, I also like to make my own interpretations and integrate a level of playfulness in the process. There is a fair deal of chance involved in watercolor painting, as the material is not always easy to manipulate in one direction or another. Often the material dictates the final form. Like a lesson in life choices or destiny, it's necessary to admit that the finale cannot always be predetermined, not by our own creation, because it is created for us. I find one of the best ways to create images is by joining representational forms with a healthy dose of loose or abstract elements. The best artworks entwine a certain rigor with an inherent letting go or submission to a loss of control. Blocked color segments are paired with repeated patterns and finer lines which depict more distinct details. These certain details, such as the spark in the eye or the curve of the cheekbone, can be heightened to a certain level of allure. And for me, that is one of the essences of great painting, making what is present in the current moment into an expression which is made curious upon future reflection. The space we occupy as we face one another is the space of psychological curiosity of interpersonal inquisition, the space painting occupies in the lives of many. It's funny, sometimes I find the best portraits are made with models whom I know only as a connaissance or someone I do not know particularly well or closely. There is a sense of mystique of uncovering someone's personality through these painting sessions, this touch and go. So you'll see that I'm kind of building up each different part of this painting um, very slowly and very deliberately. So it's not to get things exactly as they are in front of me, but it's more to kind of evoke a mood or a feeling and um, also gives you an idea of my sort of lifestyle and environment in my home. And you'll see that 
the color choice is um, kind of fluid. I'm not very picky, but I really like to have a lot of fun with this. And um, within my practice, I'm including a lot of points of sort of like integrating things that are just based on chance. I actually met Diego on chance, so maybe there's some parts to life which we have to really leave open that we can't kind of create for ourselves, but maybe are created for us. So as much as this conversation is a based on how to create something, it's also allowing what's in front of you to create itself. And that's really one of the parts about painting that I love because you don't have to do all the work. Sometimes the materials do it for you. And that's one of the best parts. Diego had green hair at one point, so maybe we'll give him green hair in this painting. Didn't you? Have it the cheveux there, Deja? It's Deja in there, yeah. Are you going to take the Avec le temps, ça devient plus, plus pâle et là, ça, ça allait, mais sinon c'était une bof fluo, quoi. Donc c'est bien. C'était une bof bof. Um, 
Ça, c'est fun, hein? Ouais. C'est fun, ouais, hein? Bah, je, je me reconnais un peu pas. for the community of different uh, creative people around me. These are Cyrus. On that same trip, I did a great sitting with Joshua Avalo. Josh has always been super supportive of my practice, so to start out with him in these sort of like experimental drawings is wonderful. You'll see the context for which he was sitting in the New York City skyline. This was in a hotel on the Bowery. And just all the different ways that he's sort of sat Um, within these drawings, I think is very successful. Um, about a year later, I had a sitting with Josh, which we did over Zoom. And they start out very um, sort of layered. And I become much more um, sort of like fluid with the practice and integrating different uh, references within art history and um, It shows like a great level of comfort and sort of like understanding of Josh and his personality. Another person who's very supportive of my practice early on who is sitting for me often is B.B. Xavier. These are very loose and they become a bit more structured up until the point where we really get what I feel is very successful in representing sort of the carefree and positive nature of her personality. These are two portraits of Eden, who is a Chinese-Irish artist from London. I painted these in Bouchemont in Paris. And I think they're very successful in that you get sort of this proximity and this closeness in the detailing. But also, you zoom out and you have the background and the foreground um, much more soft. So you get these sort of different depth perceptions and uh, playing with the perspective quite a bit. These are two people who are quite prominent within the Belgian art scene. This is Isabel Van Boss with her sort of subtle and minimal femininity. And then this is Kevin Gallagher who runs the team. Isabel is a curator. Um, Kevin is a very old friend of mine from Chicago, and that sort of proximity, um, that emotional proximity, we grew up together, it really feels like comes very clearly through in this portrait. Another person who has been integral for me in understanding the Belgian art scene is Monica Gala, who um, is one of the founders, along with Joseph Kinsendilla of um, Alma Sarif in Brussels, and Monica is an exceptional um, uh, representational drawer, so she's really given me a lot of um, suggestions on how to represent the figure, and I feel like as a, as a representation of just this like fantastic femininity, and as an intellectual, she's just someone I find um, very inspiring, so I've painted her in depth. Someone who's also um, been very um, supportive and was one of my first sitters is Stilde Schroeder, who is a curator um, with many different sides to her personality, which I am only beginning to sort of explore through um, doing her portrait. Um, she speaks many languages, and she's just one of these women who I find incredibly sensitive and it's very easy to make a variety of portraits with her because her personality is so um, complex and I'm always learning from her. Uh, someone who exists outside of the art world who is quite a prominent Belgian fashion designer is Leo. Leo's brand Leo is uh, 
popular within the rave scene and also she represents a sort of portion of the cultural sector through um, sort of dressing and embodying this way of creativity um, through music. Um, she's really a lover, so I put hearts on her face. I think these three are very successful, successful in the differentiation between them. And one of the uh, series that I started working through during COVID was male torsos, um, employing a lot of different techniques. Um, I found the torso to be really something fascinating because it, it functions as the encasement or the security for the heart. And so I represented this many times. I feel like it's easy for me to explore with this sort of set motif. And the last drawing painting that I would like to focus on is a portrait of my niece, Daisy. Um, these sittings are also a really wonderful way to create like emotional connection and ways to continue those relationships because you're constantly um, referring back to those memories. So this was the first time I had met Daisy and it was wonderful. So I keep this portrait very close to me. Um, thank you so much for joining me. It was wonderful.